16-year-old student detained for terrorist plot. The terrorist, a 16-year-old Singaporean secondary school student who is a Protestant Christian Indian, has been detained under the Internal Security Act ISA for plotting to attack two mosques, the Asia Fa and Yusuf Ishak mosques, and kill worshippers in Singapore. He is not named as he is still a minor. The student is the youngest person ever to be detained under the ISA for terrorism-related activities, and is also the first to be inspired by far-right extremist ideology. His Motivations While the student had some friends in school, he spent a substantial amount of time online. The student was self-radicalized by frequently browsing sites hosting gory content, where he came across ISIS videos. This, along with reading about the 2020 attacks on Nice in France, led him to erroneously conclude that ISIS represented Islam, and hence he incorrectly believed that Islam called on Muslims to kill all non-believers. The Internal Security Department ISD, identified that the student was clearly inspired by the Christchurch attacker, Australian white supremacist Brenton Tarrant whose attack claimed 51 lives. The student also planned to conduct his attack using similar methods to Terence, and was going to do it on the second anniversary of Terence's attack. The student had been influenced by Terence's so-called manifesto, The Great Replacement, in which Terence claimed that the mass immigration of non-Europeans in the Western nations would result in a white genocide, where white people would be colonized and replaced by non-whites. The student hence also delusionally believed that an attack by Muslims on his fellow Christians in Singapore was imminent, and that the high fertility rate of Muslims would lead to the subjugation of Christians under Islamic rule here in Singapore. He wrote two messages that he hoped would be read after his attack. One addressed to the French, which called on them to declare a war of vengeance against Islam, and another which was heavily plagiarized from Tehran's manifesto that claimed that violence was more effective than peace. The student was a lone wolf, acting alone, and he did not attempt to indoctrinate others or involve others in his plans. His plans The student initially wanted to buy an assault rifle that was similar to Tehran's on Instagram, but decided against it after, as he suspected that the seller was trying to cheat him. Afterwards, he considered joining the Singapore Rifle Association to procure a gun. He also originally planned to set fire to the mosques with petrol like Tarrant, but could not uh, figure out how to transport the fuel and was afraid of being hurt. He then bought a tactical vest online and decorated it with Tarrant's far-right extremist symbols. He further modified it to allow it to hold a mobile device so that he could livestream his attack like Tarrant. He also tried to buy a Smith & Wesson machete and walk, watched videos on how to use it. He planned to aim for vital arteries in the neck and chest area of his victims to cause maximum casualties. He plotted to steal his father's credit card to rent a blue SG car to travel between the mosques. He picked those locations as they were close to his home. Finally, he also researched how to make TATP bombs, which were used in the 2005 London Transit and 2015 Paris bombings. Rehabilitation, not jail. Minister for Home Affairs K. Shanmugam stated that the students would be placed under rehabilitation instead of jail. The student will undergo psychological counselling to deal with his tendency for violence and vulnerability to radical influences. The student will be assigned a mentor that will guide him towards pro-social behaviours. The student will be permitted family visits and an aftercare officer will be assigned to his family to provide social and financial help. He will also be allowed to continue his studies and will be permitted to take the national examinations while in detention. Mr. Shan Mugam hopes that the student will have his misperceptions of Islam corrected and complete his rehabilitation successfully. If all goes well, the student could be released in a few years and given a chance to reintegrate back into society. 
a worrying trend. Mr. Shanmugam was fearful that if the attack had not been prevented, that it would incite fear and conflict between, Singa uh, between communities in Singapore. He stated that both the ISD and the Ministry of Culture, Community and Youth would engage with religious organisations and encourage them to practice vigilance and strengthen their crisis preparedness. He described the recent rise in right-wing extremism as worrying and saddening. Mr. Shanmugam also highlighted that the student was prepared to be killed by the police to become a martyr for his cause, making this case particularly chilling. Mr. Shamuga mentioned that the storming of the US Capitol by right-wing Trump supporters had inspired other extremists elsewhere to take action, causing security agencies worldwide to step up their scrutiny of far-right groups. The anti-Muslim rhetoric of some political leaders who assert that Islam is an existential threat to Western civilization has only served to further embolden such attacks. He cautioned that there would continue to be a growing number of cases such as disappearing, especially among those under the age of 20, and that society must try its best to resist negative outside influences seeping in. Mr. Shanmugam ultimately made a promise to Singaporeans that the government would protect and keep all people here safe, regardless of their identity, their religion, or their sexual inclination. Call for Solidarity the National Council of Churches of Singapore, NCCS, expressed dismay towards the students' actions, decrying them as unrepresentative of the Christian faith and its teachings. It also applauded the authorities for their swift response, which protected Muslims from harm. The NCCS assured the Muslim community that it would remain committed to defeating hatred and violence, and would continue to work with other faiths to build a harmonious and cohesive society. The NCCS met Mufti Naziruddin Mot Nasir, the highest Islamic authority in Singapore, and uh, other Muslim leaders today for dialogue. It also addressed the matter with church leaders during a scheduled quarterly meeting today and contacted the pastor of uh, the student's church to offer support for, to the congregation. Other Christian groups like the Methodist Church, the Catholic Church of Singapore, the Alliance of Pentecostal and Charismatic Churches of Singapore, and the Heart of God Church have also denounced the students' actions and destructive ideology, with some adding that they would also reach out to the Muslim community and reassure them that they do not condone such extremist thinking. The Islamic Religious Council of Singapore, MUS, warned that the pervasiveness of social media posed a serious risk that extremist ideologies could make their way into homes. Muse also believes that these bonds between religious communities in Singapore are strong, that it would not let this incident threaten our social fabric, and that the case of the student is an isolated one and not representative of the Christian community. The Religious Rehabilitation Group and the Hindu Endowments Board and Hindu Advisory Board urged increased vigilance in the face of the issue, while the Singapore Buddhist Federation, Yang, Yang Sikh Association, AMP, and Jemaya Singapore encouraged efforts to engage with youths and help them acquire the necessary digital literacy skills. The Interreligious Organization, Singapore, Minister in Charge of Muslim Affairs, Masago Zufliki, and Minister of for Culture, Community and Youth Edwin Tong also promoted more interfaith dialogue and understanding so as to elimin eliminate prejudice and stay united. 